My name is Nick, Nick Pearson, and this is the Cycle Centre Penzant. The latest thing at the moment is lots of people are running tubeless tyres, so tyres basic without an inner tube. So basically you remove the inner tube, fit a tubeless tyre and it's, you fill it with sealant so if it does get a puncture then it self seals sort of thing. I think being, especially my colleague and myself, having been cyclists and still cyclists now, it's knowledge you pick up over the years and standards, it's still a bicycle. You know, it's still got two wheels and a pair of cranks and pedals, but lots of standards change. But in essence, it's 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 the same. And lots of people ride in Cornwall as well, believe it or not, even with the hills. John Gray, the name is. The shop is Leather Crafts in Penzance on Causeway Head, and um, at the moment, I'm just cutting out um, component parts for uh, a bag that somebody has ordered. One, two, three, four, five parts to a bag which I need to cut out. This is a very old design I'm using at the moment. Bag A was probably the first bag I made. So it was one of the early ones anyway. Learned a terrific amount of other people from simply watching what they, how they do things basically. Every day you learn something new. Well, almost every day. I wouldn't say every day, but... Uh, it's a constant, ongoing thing. You, 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 just a little thing. Sometimes you pick up something that, that you'd missed for years and years and suddenly you realise that, oh, I could have done it that way. And that's basically new knowledge. So that gets incorporated into the fund of knowledge that you have, you know. Jackie at Hobbs the Kitchen Shop in Penzance on the course we had. And I'm making scones. It's people ask regularly for scone recipes or how they can make them perfect. The quicker you make them, the better. Yeah. And handle them as little as possible. Pastry blender, straight edge pastry cutters, and a set of measuring spoons that are a tablespoon, a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, and a quarter of a teaspoon. Egg and the milk and then combine it. And as you can see, you don't press it down too deep. I don't use a rolling pin. I like them to look a bit rustic. And straight down and straight up. And there you go. And it's going for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> My name is Roz and I have a shop called Red Accessories in Penzance and I'm a milliner. We make and design all our patterns. So once you've got your pattern, you've cut your hat out. We use special interlining, that's a big secret, I'm not giving that one away. And first of all, what I would do, you've, the, the, the crown area would just be, you know, one big piece of fabric. So I have to go round and measure all these little tucks into it, sew those, attach that to the crown, then attach the whole of the crown once we've made the brim. Another thing is support it all in the edge of it so it's not like going floppy. And what you have to do really is if you're just starting, it's the same as with anything, you've got to experiment and you've got to practice and you have to work at a pattern until it works for you. It's just have a go at it. Hello, my name is Jutta. My shop is called Florisea. I'm based here in Penzance and um, I've opened my shop just over a year ago now. This is my workshop area and here I'm going to create a, a smaller version of, of the spring wreath I've got in the front. I'm using different kind of greens for it, not the traditional winter foliage. So it's going to be a spring wreath. I'm using Veximum, still going to have a moss spice. And I'm going to include some spring vibes just to make it look a little bit more cheerful and not just all green. I have all different kinds of workshops. I had Christmas wreath making workshops just before Christmas. I do floral table decorations. Got some upcoming ones for a spring wreath for a floral hoop for people to put a hoop and uh, have it hanging in the window, for example. 
I like to to support the British grown industry as much as I can as well by purchasing locally and British grown flowers. I'm Leslie Matthews. This is the Arcade Cobbler. It's been going since approximately 1987. We offer repairs to all types of footwear, alterations for people who have had hip operations and knee operations. We do zips in boots and bags. We sell and reheal anything we can economically. My daughter joined me about four years ago to help on the counter. We have had to diversify a bit from just the footwear. Certain generation will buy expensive footwear and literally wear it out and throw it away. And for a fraction of the cost, they can be repaired. But young lads will buy a nice pair of shoes, wear them out, wear the heels down and throw them away. That generation we don't get in and I'd like to see a bit more of that because we're chucking everything away and we can stop that. My name's Helen Swift, um, the shop is Archie Brown's. What's unique to the shop in the area here is the refills, washing up liquid, laundry liquid, fabric conditioner, we do refills for all of those so that people can save their plastic. And she does these which are the felted soaps from alpacas that she keeps herself on her land, it's you know, very, very local. Sometimes you can't get in the door because there's people all having conversations, you know, around and all meeting each other and it just feels like it's like a meeting hub sometimes. And I love it for that reason. My name is Kat and this shop is called the Trans Oriental Foods. Um, we've been in Penzance for about uh, over 10 years now. Um, we get lots of people coming in and asking us for advice on how to cook Chinese food. One of the most popular dishes after the Christmas for Chinese New Year is crispy aromatic duck. Today, luckily, I've got some. Um, here is the whole duck itself. And it's basically already done. You just put it in the oven and to make it crispy. And it shreds really nicely. And it's one of the most popular dishes in the restaurant. This is the secret to crispy aromatic duck. You put the duck in this solution. Uh, as you can see, it's like a mixture of all the herbs and spices. And there are some sauces that you can put in to this mix to make it a bit more uh, concentrated, so there's more depth. I think what we sell in the shop is quite specialized. Um, because you you won't find another Chinese grocery store in Cornwall. We are the only one. I'm Sharon Holmes, and I've got Make Industries with my husband. We've been here for five years now, and it houses quite a few makers. I think at the last count, between 40 and 60. So they rather rent shelf or it's done on commission, whatever they want to do. Um, so it's makers all from West Cornwall. We were at a pop up shop up the top end of town for six weeks um, it's, it, it was quite popular so we thought oh we better get a grown-up space so we did we got this space we make our own clothing as well children's clothing so we've got a workroom downstairs we have got a back garden that we're putting in for uh, CIC which is uh, a garden plot to do workshops that will be an exhibition space an outside garden and um, we've got a little pot of shed so we want to bring somebody in and just rent it for a very very low rent so that's just going through the lottery at the minute. Fingers crossed. Right, I'm Jean from Buttons and Bows. We sell all sorts of haberdashery, fabrics, um, dressmaking fabrics, threads, trims, lace. You can um, repair and mend clothing, mending tapes, and they're easily iron on. You don't have to be able to sew, you can iron them on. Or there's lots of trims and various buttons, beads that you can customise your clothes so you don't have to buy new, you can make them your, your own personal um, designs on clothing. Uh, uh, furnishings, you can add bobble trims to furnishings like curtains and cushions and these are the iron-on patches for mending your, your jeans or there's a various range of patches and motifs for 
repairing or embellishing and just to refresh your tired clothes instead of buying new. There's not many people doing handmade folk instruments particularly. And we're doing repair work as well. So Hannah's obviously got the wooden experience because she's a violin maker and knows more about wood and then I've had the metal side doing woodwind instruments so uh, it's been good to come together and produce stuff. I mean people can't believe we actually make it, they, we, that's quite a common thing is that they can't get their heads around the fact, I think people are so separated from the fact that people make stuff, you know. They think we're either buying the bits or they can't even they can't, get their yeah. heads around the metal work we turn down ourselves or we drill the holes or anything, it's completely beyond. So they're basically a penny whistle, people commonly known as a penny whistle, so they're um, designed from playing Irish folk, specifically. Um, they're made of uh, a range of woods, we've got yeah. pear, costella boxwood, um, actually you tell, you explain the words. Maple, uh, these ones are walnut. Um, and we've got some holly ones somewhere, I think, unless we've sold them all. And that's holly. Holly, which yeah. was um, Hannah cut the tree herself. And we're trying to use sustainable... Well, we are using sustainable timber. Yeah, so it's great getting it right from the local woods. 